जय राधे जय कृष्ण जय वृंदवा जय राधे जय कृष्ण जय वृंदवा श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मदन मोह श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मदन मोह श्याम कुंड राध कुंड गिरि गोवर्धा श्याम कुंड राध कुंड गिरि गोवर्धा कालिंदिया मुना जाया जाया मानो कालिंदिया मुना जाया जय मानो किसी गाथा वाम सी बाथा द्वादशा सी गाथा वाम सी बाथा द्वादशा खाना जहाज बलि लो श्री नंदानंदा जहाजी लो श्री नंदानंद श्री नंदा शोरा जाय जय गोपा श्री नंदा शोरा जाय जय गोपा हम 
श्रीमनाधि जाय जाय देनु बच्चा Shridamadhi chaya chaya denu vatsa kaan Jaya vrisha banu jaya Kirti da sundari Jaya vrisha banu jaya Kirti da sundari Jaya Purnamasi Jaya Abhiranagari Jaya Purnamasi Jaya Abhiranagari Jaya Jaya Gopeshwara Vrindavana Maj Jaya Jaya Gopeshwara Vrindavana Maj Jaya Jaya Krishna Saka Vatu Dvijara Jaya Jaya Krishna Shaka Vata Dvijaraj Jaya Rama Gata Jaya Rohini Nandan Jaya Rama Gata Jaya Rohini Nandan Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Vasujata Jahan Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Vasi Jata Jahan Jaya 
jaya dwi chapat ni jaya naga kanya gahan jaya dwi chapat ni jaya Naga Kanya Gahan Bhakti Te Jahara Pailo Govinda Chara Bhakti te yahara pailo govinda chara Shri rasa mandala jaya Jaya Radha Shyam Shri Rasa Mandala Jaya Jaya Radha Shyam Jaya Jaya Rasa Lila Sarva Mano Ram Jaya Jaya Rasa Lila Sarva Mano Ram Jaya Jaya Jwala Rasa Sarva Rasa Saha Jaya Jaya Jwala Rasa Sarva Rasa Sahar Parakiya Bhaveyaha Brajate Praja Parakiya Bhaveyaha Brajate Praja Shri Janava Pada Padma Kori Asmaran Shri Janava Pada Padma Kori Asmaran Dhyan 
Dina Krishna Dasa Kohe Nama Sankirta Dina Krishna Dasa Kohe Nama Sankirta Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vrindavan Shri Govinda Gopinath Madana Moha Nittai Gaur Haribo 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 Nittai Gaur Haribo Jai Brajadam Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we've been asked to speak something about the glories of Srimati Radharani. Of course, tomorrow is actually the appearance day of Srimati Radharani. But in preparation for tomorrow, we'll try to speak something today about the divine appearance of Srimati Radharani. So, we know Srimati Radharani's appearance day is 14 days after Lord Krishna's appearance. Lord Krishna is also Astami, Krishna Janmastami, and Srimati Radharani's Rad Astami. So, she's 14 days after the appearance of Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani appears in Varsana as the daughter of Kirtida and Vrishabhanu. Maharaj Vrishabhanu. He was a wealthy man. He has a, has a great palace there in Varsana. So it was there, Srimati Radharani appeared. However, when the child was born, parents were naturally very happy that they have such a beautiful child. There was only one problem, child wouldn't open her eyes. So, Maharaj Vrishabhanu and Kirtida, they were both worried, what's wrong? Why this child doesn't open her eyes? So it took some time, it took some time before Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda came over from Goku to Varsana because they had heard that Kirtida and Vrishabhanu had been blessed with a daughter. So they thought it would be very nice. We should go there and see their child and we can also 
uh, give some offering in honor of the appearance of their daughter. So in this way, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, along with baby Krishna, they came there to Varsana. And at this time, little uh, Srimati Radharani was laying in the cot, which was on the ground. So the cot was on the ground, and child Krishna came with Nanda and Yashoda, and Krishna is crawling around as a child, young baby, young babies do, they like to crawl. So Lord Krishna was on his hands and knees and he was crawling and he came in front of the cot in which Srimati Radharani was laying. And as soon as Lord Krishna came and put his head over the cot and looked in the cot, then immediately Radharani opened her eyes. So the very first person she ever saw was Lord Krishna. And Srimati Radharani, she only has eyes for Krishna. She does not look on any other man except Krishna. So she is the most chaste of all ladies. Later on, when she grew up to be a young woman, there was some challenge issued that who is actually the chaste lady? Who is really a chaste woman? And the challenge was there that there was a pot which was filled with holes and said, if the woman is actually chaste, then the water will not run out and she can cross the river without even a drop of water coming out. So the different ladies all thinking, oh yes, I'm very chaste. I think I can try. But when they would try, the water would all come out. And even uh, Jotila, Jotila and her daughter, they, they were thinking they could try, but hopeless. All the water poured out. So then they said, why doesn't Srimati Radharani try? And Jotila, they were, Radharani, bah. No, Radharani, she's not chaste. She could never do it. She's not chaste at all. Don't give it to her. But they said, anyway, let her try. And so the pot was given to Srimati Radharani, and she crossed without even one drop of water coming out. And so like that, Srimati Radharani proved herself to be the most chaste of all ladies. Srimati Radharani is the, uh, the, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. She is the Ladini Shakti. In the spiritual world, there are three potencies. Ladini, Samvit, and Sandini. Sandini is a potency by which everything is maintained. And Samvit is the cognizance potency or that knowledge potency. And Ladini is the pleasure potency. So it is said that Radha and Krishna were originally one, but they separated themselves eternally. Srimati Radharani is the 
we said the ladini shakti, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. So her whole purpose is simply to give pleasure to Krishna. And whatever she does, it is simply for the pleasure of Krishna. She does not think about pleasing any other man. Now, it is said when Srimati Radharani was a young girl, it happened that Durvasa Muni came there to Maharaj Prishabhanu's palace. And Srimati Radharani was requested to cook for Durvasa Muni. So she cooked very nicely, and Durvasa Muni blessed her. He blessed her that whatever she would cook, it would be just like nectar. So when Krishna was beginning to go out to the forests of Vrindavan to take the cows out, at that time, Jai Radha Govinda. At that time, Krishna was going off to the forest. So during the daytime, the ladies in Gokula were supposed to cook for the supper for Lord Krishna coming home in the evening. They would take some breakfast in the morning and they would take a lunch box with them to the forest which would be something like rice and yogurt. And they'd come home at night and they'd have a meal in the evening. So the ladies were expected to cook for the, the, for the men coming home from the forest with the cows. During the daytime, they would take the animals, the cows, off into the forest to graze, to eat the grass, and to drink the water of the Yamuna, and in this way the cows are happy. So Lord Krishna was going every day with the calves, and the ladies were supposed to cook. So Mother Yashoda, she understood, she knew that Srimati Radharani has this blessing from Darvasa Muni that whatever she cooks will be just like nectar. So Mother Yashoda arranged that Srimati Radharani would come there to go cool and she would cook for Lord Krishna every evening. She would spend the whole day cooking and in the evening the meal would be served to Lord Krishna. Mm. So the late the Srimati Radharani would spend many days, well, she spent many, many hours over hot fires cooking for Krishna. And Krishna would enjoy teasing. He would, Krishna likes to play tricks. So Radharani had spent the whole day cooking and she would try to prepare very special dishes for Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna was aware that she'd been cooking all day and she was anxious that everything she'd cooked would be appreciated by Krishna. So, one evening, Srimati Radharani had prepared this very special sweet to give to Krishna. And she brought the sweet and offered it on a dish to, in front of Krishna. So Krishna looks and he, know, he knows, oh, this is, this is my favorite sweet. 
that this uh, Srimati Radharani must have really worked hard, spent a lot of time laboring to cook. You know, cooking on gobar, it takes some time. Have you ever cooked on gobar? It takes some time to cook on the gobar. It's not like gas <laughs> or electricity or anything. Cook on gobar. You have to be patient and you have to be attentive also. So, Srimati Radharani had prepared this very nice sweet. And Krishna sees the sweet, so he takes his finger and he takes a tiny morsel from it. And he puts it in his mouth and he goes, Ugh. And Radharani, she's standing just at the doorway, hiding. And she's watching and she sees Krishna take that morsel and put it in her mouth and she's watching and and then she sees Krishna go and Radharani goes Srimati Radharani is heartbroken what happened anyway Krishna takes the sweet gives it to Madhumangal Madhumangal the fat Brahmin friend of Lord Krishna and he likes to take his evening meal with Krishna because he knows Radharani has been cooking all day. Everything is like nectar. So Krishna gave the sweet to Madhu Mangal and Madhu Mangal takes a little piece, a tiny piece and he goes, oh, so nectar, so wonderful. So this is uh, uh, the dealings between Radha and Krishna. Radha Rani is the she is the Ladini Shakti of Lord Krishna, and all of her qualities are for the pleasure of Krishna. And she has two qualities which are especially appreciated by Krishna. One was her cooking, right? Cooking is very important, right? What is the good of a woman if she can't cook? And so cooking is a very important quality and Radharani was expert cook and she would cook every day for Krishna. But there was another quality which was very important, which gave the greatest pleasure to Krishna. Who knows what that was? Anybody know? One special quality. Well, you have to appreciate, you have to appreciate Krishna's qualities. That Lord Krishna, he is, he's a, a great dancer. Lord Krishna, it's praised, I was just reading today from the Nectar of Devotion because every Saturday morning, I have a class to Russia and we're reading the Nectar of Devotion. So this morning I was reading a section from the Nectar of Devotion where one devotee was praising Lord Krishna and he was saying to Christ Lord Krishna that I know you're not a professional dancer but still when we see you dance we can understand that you are the master of all dance. Lord Krishna enjoys to dance. Now, if you're a great dancer, you definitely want to have a partner who can dance equally as good as you. It's very important. If you're a good dancer and nobody else can dance good, then it's not very good. 
So you need a partner who can also dance. So Srimati Radharani is expert in dance. And if you go to Varsana, there's one place on the top of the Varsana hill where Radha and Krishna danced as peacocks. The peacocks enjoy dancing. The devotees in Russia were telling me today that they're, got, they're planning to do a peacock dance tomorrow. You know, Russian women, you know, they like to dance. They're always dancing. And so they're doing a peacock dance. I don't know if anybody here can do peacock dance. <laughs> anyway, uh, Radha and Krishna enjoy in this way. They take, they dress as peacocks and they can dance like peacocks. So in this way, Srimati Radharani, as a young girl, she's able to give the greatest pleasure to Lord Krishna by her cooking, by her dancing. Actually, everything she does is pleasing to Krishna. All of the gopis are expansions of Srimati Radharani. We know we have the Astasakis, Tungavidya, Chitra, Champakalata, Lalita, Vishaka, Induleka, Rangadevi, Sudevi. They are the Astasakis and they are all expansions of Srimati Radharani. And they are also for the service of Radha and Krishna. The Sakis make arrangements to bring Radha and Krishna together. The Sakis are always desiring to give pleasure to Krishna. And they know Krishna's greatest pleasure comes when he is with Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is the original form of the Lord's pleasure. Lord Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. He likes to enjoy. That is, we know everything. And, and the gopis, and Srimati Radharani, they like to give pleasure to Krishna. But problem is that although they like to give pleasure to Krishna, they get more pleasure than Krishna gets. Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. He likes to enjoy. And the gopis are all arranging for the pleasure of Krishna. But the result is that they get more pleasure than Krishna gets. Srimati Radharani enjoys loving relationship with Krishna. She enjoys the wonderful qualities that are in Krishna. And she enjoys when she sees how much Krishna likes her. In this way, she's enjoying millions of times more than Krishna. So Lord Krishna thinks to himself, I have come to this world to enjoy, but she is enjoying She's enjoying more than me. I want to taste her pleasure. And that is why Lord Krishna come, comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that he can experience the pleasure which 
Srimati Radharani gets in being the servant of Lord Krishna, in pleasing him. Pleasing Krishna. So this is the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we should follow in the footsteps of the gopis of Braja. The greatest devotees of Lord Krishna are the gopis of Braja. Lord Krishna actually has consorts. There are three groups of consorts of Lord Krishna. There are the goddesses of fortune, Lakshmi, in the spiritual world. And there are many, many goddesses of fortune in the Vaikuntha. So they're all consorts of the Lord. And then there are the queens of Dwarka. We know Lord Krishna's queens in Dwarka, 16,108 queens. They are all the consorts of Lord Krishna. But there are the gopis of Braja, and it's the gopis of Braja who are the most confidential, the most dear of all the consorts of Lord Krishna. So the, the gopis of Braja are the greatest devotees of Krishna. And of all the gopis, then there are 16,000 gopis who are very prominent, who are very great. And from these 16,000 gopis, there's 108 gopis who are very prominent. And from the 108, there are eight gopis who are very prominent. And from these eight, then you have two more. You have Srimati Radharani and Chandravali. So they're like competitors. They Two, the two leading gopis compete with each other to give pleasure to Krishna. Lord Krishna likes to enjoy the loving exchange. So the loving exchange is more intense when there's no marriage. When there is marriage, like in the queens at Dwarka, then there's some pleasure there, but it's not equal to the pleasure which is there when there's no marriage, just as Lord Krishna is with the gopis. So there's Swakya Rasa and Parakya Rasa. Parakya Rasa meaning unwedded relationship. And in the dealings between the Lord Krishna and the gopis, without the marriage, there's more intense, loving relationship, more excitement, and more pleasure. So Lord Krishna gets the highest pleasure in this way, with the gopis of Braja. So the, the gopis of Braja they are used by Lord Krishna for his own pleasure. As we said, Lord Krishna likes to dance. And that dancing comes particularly in the forest of Vrindavan, in the particular season when it's most pleasant, which is in the Sarat season. When the Sarat Purnima, the full moon in the Sarat season, then that is the nicest time to be in the forest, very fragrant, nice smell of forest flowers and cool breeze. And in this way, perfect situation for Lord Krishna to enjoy with the greatest devotees, the gopis of Braja, that they come there to the forest to be with Lord Krishna 
in Vrindavan, the most perfect place in the most perfect time with the most perfect people. Lord Krishna picks the most beautiful ladies who are there as gopis who have all come to give pleasure to Krishna. We should understand these gopis of Braja are not ordinary ladies. Just as Srimati Radharani is not, ordin not an ordinary woman, we said she is the Ladini Shakti, and from her come the eight Astasakis, and the Astasakis, they also expand other forms, different groups of gopis. So, different gopis are there, and some of the gopis, they are coming from the spiritual world. They are Nitya Siddhas. They have come just to be in Krishna's pastimes. And some gopis are the personified Vedas, the Shruti Charas. The Shruti Charas, the personified Vedas, they desired to understand the Lord's Rasa Leela. They had that desire to know the Lord, to know the personal form of the Lord. Because they were the Shruti Charas, they were the personified Vedas. From the Vedas, it's very difficult to understand Lord Krishna. Lord Brahma says, Vedeshu Durlabham. All right. Uh, how does it go? That uh, Lord Krishna. Uh, Advaita Machuta Manadi Mananta Rupam Adyam Purana Purusham Yavanovanamcha Vede Shudurlabam Adurlabam Atma Bhakto Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajami. Lord Brahma is praying, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is one without a second, who is without beginning, whose forms are endless. Who, who is the oldest of all, who is the beginning, and still he is a person possessing the beauty of blooming youth. He is inaccessible by the Vedas, very difficult to know by the Vedas, but he can be known by unalloyed devotion of the soul. So Vedeshu Durlabham, the personified Vedas have difficulty to know Krishna. And so they performed great austerities and they got the blessing that they could go to Vrindavan and they could know Krishna. So they came to Vrindavan and they wanted to join Rasalila. But they said, no, you have to take, you have to, you want to go into Rasalila, you have to take birth in the family of the cowherd people. So the Shruti Charas, you know, they're the personified Vedas, very like high birth. But they have to take birth in the families of Braja, in the family of the cowherd people. And they have to become gopis. And then in the form of gopis, then they can go to Rasa Leela with Krishna. And similarly, the sages from the Dandakaranya, they had met Lord Rama and they desired to have amorous relationship with Lord Rama. So Lord Rama told them, I have vowed only one wife in this life. You have to come in my next Leela. You come when I take birth as Lord Krishna. And at that time, you can. And so the sages from Dandakaranya they also took birth in Braja, in the family of cowherd people. And they also became gopis. So among the gopis, you have these different groups. You have some gopis coming from the spiritual world. 
You have some who are the sages from Dandakaranya and you have the personified Vedas. Then you have also some perfected souls who are coming up, who are getting ready to go back to Godhead. And they're also coming, they're taking birth in Krishna's pastimes. Jiva Goswami explains that you don't immediately go back to Godhead. You have to take birth wherever Lord Krishna is appearing in this world. And you take birth there and take part in Krishna's pastimes. In this way you get further training before you can go back into the spiritual world. Sometimes people feel a little disturbed. Oh, I have to take birth again. <laughs> but we should understand it's a great blessing to be able to take birth where Lord Krishna is appearing and to enter, to take part in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And in this way we become qualified to enter into the spiritual world. If we would try to go immediately back to the spiritual world, it would be too much. We've not properly, we're not qualified, we're not fully ready for that yet. So you take a birth where Krishna is appearing and take part in Krishna's pastimes. So Srimati Radharani, she is experiencing more much, much, much more pleasure than Lord Krishna. And that is why Lord Krishna came in the Kali Yuga as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In order to taste the pleasure of being in that mood of Srimati Radharani. We say Radha Bhava Jyoti Suvalitam, right? That like that is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in the mood of Srimati Radharani in order to taste that pleasure which Srimati Radharani is experiencing. So the mood of the gopis, this is common among all the gopis, their mood is to give pleasure to Lord Krishna. They don't want anything for their own self. They have no material desire. They simply want to give pleasure to Krishna. And this mood is shown in Lord Chaitanya's Shikshastikam prayers. In the final verse of the Shikshastikam, Aslishyava padaratam panastumam adarshanam marmatam karotu. This final verse, it is said, this is uttered in the mood of Srimati Radharani. Because she has the the highest, the most intense love for Krishna. And so she is saying to Krishna that if my being unhappy makes you happy, then that is my happiness. If you can find a wife like that, you're very lucky. Hmm? Usually the wife will say, your job is to make me happy. But Srimati Radharani, in her mood, in service to Krishna, she prays that if my being unhappy makes you happy, that is my happiness. Right? Not very easy to find a wife like that. <laughs> this is the mood of Srimati Radharani, that if Krishna breaks her heart, but if she's thinking, if my heart being broken is what makes Krishna happy, 
then that is my happiness. We know the story when Krishna has a headache and he said, only the dust from the feet of my devotees can cure my headache. So they asked the brahmanas, my dear saintly brahmanas, can you give the dust from your feet to cure Krishna's headache? And the brahmanas said, no, no. If we give the dust from our feet, we'll never get to go back to Godhead. We'll never get liberation from this world. If Krishna will take the dust from our feet and put it on his head, that will be very bad for us. But when they asked the gopis to give the dust, when they said, Lord Krishna has the headache, only the dust from the feet of his devotees will cure him. The gopi said, we don't mind. Whatever happens to us, we only care about Krishna. Krishna should not suffer from a headache. So we can go to hell. That doesn't matter. But we don't want Krishna to have a headache. So this is the mood of the, the gopis, the gopis of Braja. They're thinking how to give pleasure to Krishna. And all of their dealings is simply for the pleasure of Krishna. It's all what will make Krishna happy. They don't know anything else except Krishna. And that was seen when Lord Krishna would play on his flute. And he would be in the forest in the night. And he would play on his flute. And the gopis would hear the sound of Krishna's flute. The gopis would all come running. They did not care about their family, their brothers, and even their husbands. Was, where are you going? Don't, where are you going? You have to go. They would just go. They didn't give even explanation. They gave up their chastity for the pleasure of Krishna. A woman's chastity is the most valuable thing to her. A woman, every respectable woman will value their chastity more than any other quality. And that was why Draupadi was so disturbed when they tried to disrobe her. Because her chastity was being tested. So, the gopis, they showed the greatest chastity by their faithfulness to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna had called them, come to the forest. And they did not care about their husbands. They did not care about their family. They did not care about their position in society. They simply cared Krishna is calling. I should go. That is the mood of the gopis. That they will sacrifice everything for Krishna. And the topmost of all of the gopis is Srimati Radharani that she has the greatest love for Krishna. We know how the gopis cursed Lord Brahma. Why did they curse Brahma? Because he gave us these eyes which are obstructing our vision of Krishna. We want to see Krishna constantly but our eyes are flickering. We're not able to see Krishna all the time. This Brahma, this Brahma, he's a useless creator. He's a useless man. He gave us his imperfect eyes. That is 
That is uh, one of the verses in the Gopi Gita. If you know the Gopi Gita, it describes there. It's so even there's one pastime, Srimati Radharani was with Krishna. And then a, a bumblebee came. And the bumblebee is called Madhu. So Krishna is also called Madhusudan. Krishna had killed the demon Madhu. But Madhu also means bumblebee. So it happened that Krishna was sitting with Srimati Radharani and they were on a swing under a Kadamba tree and they were enjoying the Vrindavan atmosphere when this bumblebee came. And Srimati Radharani, she's a young girl and she was afraid, oh, the bumblebee is coming. It was disturbing. But then Krishna chased it away. And Krishna said, Madhu is gone. And when Radharani heard, Madhu is gone, she said, Madhu is gone. She thought Krishna had gone. She didn't think the bumblebee, she thought Krishna has gone. And when she heard Krishna has gone, she fainted. This is the mood of Radharani. She had even though Krishna was right by her side and Krishna had chased the bee away and said the bee's gone, she thought Krishna had gone and she fainted. And similarly, in Krishna book, we have the wonderful pastime where Srimati Radharani is present when Uddhava had come to Vrindavan. Now Uddhava is a very, very dear friend and secretary of Lord Krishna. And Uddhava has achieved Swarupya Mukti. He looks like Krishna. He had the hair like Krishna. He had the eyes like Krishna. He had the long arms down to his knees like Krishna. He would wear the garland of Krishna. He would wear the clothes of Krishna. So he had come. Krishna had sent Uddhava to deliver a message to the gopis. So Uddhava had come there to Vrindavan. And first he met with Nanda and Yashoda. And then after pass meeting with them and talking to Nanda and Yashoda for some time, then Uddhava arranged to go to a quiet place to meet with the gopis. And he told the gopis he'd brought a letter from Lord, from Lord Krishna. So naturally the gopis were all anxious to hear this message from Lord Krishna. But when Uddhava took out the letter and began to read the letter, at that, at that time there was a bumblebee again and it was fluttering around the gopis. And one of the gopis began to speak to the bumblebee and address the bumblebee. And she addressed the bumblebee Oh, you messenger from Lord Krishna, you are the unreliable servant of an unreliable master. Don't you come near me. The bumblebee was flying around Radharani. Radharani was speaking to the bumblebee in this way. And she began to speak, I know all about you. I've heard about you from Purnamasi. You know who Purnamasi is? Purnamasi is an elderly lady who lives in Vrindavan. And she knows about everyone's past lives. And she knows, she arranges the marriages for the different people. Things like this. 
So Purnamasi is a very respected lady there in Vrindavan. So Radharani, she was speaking to the bumblebee being. She said, I've heard all about you. I know all about you, what you did in your previous life. In your previous life, you were a king and you were approached by a woman. Surpanika approached you and she wanted to have an amorous relationship with you and you refused her. Although you were a Kshatriya, you were meant to satisfy her, but you refused her. And not only did you refuse her, you cut off her ears and you cut off her nose. I know all about how cruel you are. And I know how you killed Valley by unfair means. You hid behind a tree and then you came out and killed Valley from behind a tree. I know what kind of person you are. You're not a good person. You do these kind of things. So don't you come near me. Like this Radharani was speaking to the bumblebee. So Uddhava was hearing Radharani speak to the bumblebee. He could understand just how much love she must, how much attachment she must have for Krishna. And then the bumblebee disappeared. And when the bumblebee disappeared, then Radharani became more ecstatic and she became very disturbed that, oh, where have you gone? Where have you gone? Oh, have you gone to tell Krishna what I said about him? Are you going to go to Dwarka and tell Krishna everything I've been saying about him? Then he will never come to see me again. Then we will never see Krishna. But then the bumblebee reappears and Radharani says, oh, you've come back. Oh, you've come back. You want to take me to Dwarka? But, but how can you take me to Dwarka? You're only a bumblebee. How can you take me to Dwarka? Uh, like the, so Uddhava was hearing all of the ecstasy of Radharani as she spoke to this bumblebee. And he could understand how much love this Gopi must have for Krishna. So this, this is the, the famous pastime which takes place in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes people say that the name of Radharani is never mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But actually, the Acharyas tell us it is. <clears throat> it is said, Sutta, Sukadeva Goswami was very cautious about mentioning the name of Srimati Radharani. Because if he would just mention her name, he would feel so much ecstasy himself. And he didn't want to go into ecstasy, he wanted to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam. He has to complete the Bhagavatam. So he was very careful to avoid mentioning her name. But what he did do, he mentioned, he used the word Aradhanam. Aradhanam meaning the most expert in worship. And in this way, he has described Srimati Radharani. So sometimes people say Radharani's name is not there in the Bhagavatam, but it is there if you know the meaning of these words like Aradhanam meaning one who is most expert in the worship of Krishna. So from Aradhanam comes the name Radha, and Radha Rani, the queen of Vrindavan. So maybe we'll stop here. We'll ask if there are any questions. Maybe this is just all... Yes, Maharaji, any question? Yes, over Prabhu, you have a question there?
Yes, well, we have to understand that in the dealings between Lord Krishna and the gopis, there is no lust. In the material world, there is lust. But in the dealings between Lord Krishna and the gopis, there is no lust. There is only prem. Lust is the desire to satisfy our own senses. So people in the material world, conditioned souls, are very eager to satisfy their own senses, material desires. From the Bhagavad Gita, we know there are three gates to hell, right? Three gates to hell. Calm, crowed, and lobe. Yes, lust, anger, and greed. Three gates to hell. And that anger and greed, they come from lust. So lust is the all-devouring sinful enemy of people. People desire lust, sense gratification, satisfy their own material desires. I have been explaining that among the gopis, headed by Srimati Radharani, there is no material desire. There's no thought of their own pleasure. They only desire to give pleasure to Krishna. That is the difference. There's such a big difference between materialistic people and the devotees, the pure-hearted devotees. The gopis of Braja are the purest, the greatest devotees, and they simply desire to give pleasure to Krishna. They don't think about their own sense gratification. But people in the material world, they may imitate, they want to imitate the pastimes of Krishna. We say Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Baradari. Right? Yashod Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari. So they want to be Kunja Bihari. They want to enjoy the pastimes in the forest with the gopis, but they cannot pick up the Govardhan Hill. If we say, yes, you want to be Kunja Bihari, then Yashodan uh, Gopijana uh, Girid Baradari. You have to also pick up the Govardhan Hill. First you pick up the Govardhan Hill, then you can be Kunja Bihari. So only Krishna can pick up the Govardhan Hill. Just like Prabhupada went, he met with one professor in America, one scholar. And the scholar said to Prabhupada, he said, how can you worship Krishna? Krishna is an adulterer. He has so many lady friends. And Prabhupada said to the professor, he said, it is you who are the adulterer. All women belong to Krishna. The professor was thinking, no, I'm married. I have my married wife. But Prabhupada said, no, you are the adulterer. Your wife also belongs to Krishna. But you're thinking she's for your enjoyment. That is calm. That is not preem. So the lust of the material world is prominent. And people will even try to imitate Krishna in the name of Krishna they will think, this is all right. I am just doing what Krishna does. So they do not understand the actual position of Lord Krishna. Therefore, I was saying, before we will speak on Rasa Leela, you first of all have to be freed of all material desires. You have to give up all thought of sense gratification then you can understand Krishna's pastimes. 
So long as you still have desire to enjoy the material world, you have no qualification to hear Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, Radharani is more merciful than Krishna, right? So, uh, could you please uh, give some instance or some pastime where we understand that how Radharani is more uh, merciful than Lord Krishna? More merciful than Krishna. Well, we're, we were explaining how Srimati Radharani always wants to please Krishna. Uh, being me more merciful than Krishna. Krishna rarely gives devotional service. Pure devotional service, Krishna will rarely give that. Krishna is very reluctant to give pure devotion to others. Why? Because he becomes purchased by the pure devotees. He becomes controlled by those who are his pure devotees. Just as Mother Yashoda bound up Krishna. Arjuna became took Krishna as his charioteer. Lord Krishna delivered a message for Maharaj Yudhisthira. When people become Krishna's pure devotees, Lord Krishna becomes obliged to them. He becomes conquered by them. Right? Krishna is Ajita, but he is conquered by the pure love of his devotees. Therefore, Krishna rarely gives pure devotion no service. But Srimati Radharani is more merciful than Krishna, that she will distribute the opportunity to serve Krishna to others. The gopis, they want to make arrangements for Krishna to be with Radharani, but Radharani, she likes to make arrangements for the gopis to be with Krishna. She doesn't think that I should be with Krishna. She thinks, let Krishna have the company of the other gopis, that they're more qualified than me. She's thinking like that. That is her mercy on the other gopis, that she wants to bring them to be with Krishna. And she comes, as we said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes in that mood of Radharani. And in that mood of Radha Bhav, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is distributing Krishna Prem to everyone. We say, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. The Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. He is Lord Krishna, but he's come in the mood, in the complexion of Srimati Radharani. And in that mood of Srimati Radharani, he is distributing Krishna Prem to everyone. It is said, when Lord Krishna appeared, he brought with him a storehouse of love of God. But the storehouse was kept locked. You had to surrender to Krishna, to taste it, to get that nectar which Krishna brought. You had to first of all surrender to Krishna. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came along with his associates, the Panchatattva, and they plundered the storehouse of love of God. And they broke open the contents and they distributed it freely to everyone, everywhere. 
They did not consider who was qualified and who was not. Young men, old men, women, children, they gave to everyone. Krishna Prem. And the more they distributed the supply, the more the supply increased hundreds of times. This is the mercy of Srimati Radharani, as we see through the behavior of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who comes to, to show us the mood of Srimati Radharani and to experience it himself. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. His question is, who, who is actually Uddhava? Who is just like looking uh, Shri Krishna himself, like from the complexion to the body and the clothes and everything. So is he a, uh, a normal cowherd boyfriend or is he some great personality who is looking like, he is the only personality who just look like Krishna himself. Oh yes, he is a great personality, certainly. From his very childhood, he had been a devotee of Krishna. And so he's a very, very great devotee. He's deeply attached to being with Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna also enjoys his company. He has also some relationship with Krishna, he, like cousins or something. I can't remember exactly the details, but there is some relationship there. He's connected to Lord Krishna's family. But he's certainly very, very dear associate of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna will even ask Uddhava for his advice. He will ask Uddhava, what do you think? What should we do? And Lord Krishna took the opportunity to send Uddhava to Vrindavan to bring the message to the gopis. Now Uddhava was a disciple of Brihaspati. So he was a very learned person. And some people say that Lord Krishna sent Uddhava to Vrindavan to teach the gopis. But actually other people say that Lord Krishna sent Uddhava to Vrindavan to learn from the gopis. Not to teach them, but to learn from the gopis of Braja. And Uddhava prayed in the future that he could take birth, that he could take birth as grass or creep, or some plant which grows in Vrindavan so that he could get the dust from the feet of the gopis. Because he, can, he, know, he knows the gopis will never give the dust from their feet to him. But he prays that he could take birth as a plant and in this way get the dust from their feet. So he appreciated so much the mood of the gopis. And he understood their great devotion to Lord Krishna. So Uddhava spent two months in Vrindavan with the gopis. And every day he would meet with them and he would talk with them about Krishna. And he showed them how to, how to counteract the pain of separation from Krishna by remembering Lord Krishna's pastimes and by discussing and reenacting the pastimes of Krishna. Yes, Prabhu? You don't hear anything about Chandravali? Yes, we don't hear about Chandravali because <laughs> We're following Radharani more than, <laughs> we're not following Chandra. We don't want to become too absorbed in Chandra Valley. But we should understand there is that competitor to Radharani. 
which creates more intensity in the loving exchange between Radha and Krishna. That there is the other woman, there is the other gopi, and this is what creates the intense feelings uh, that Radharani, oh, Krishna's gone to Chandravali, then Radharani, but all right, then I, I will never see him again. She will bow like that. It just, it's, it's only for, for rasa, these, these, the mention is there, to increase the rasa, increase the intensity of the loving dealings between Radha and Krishna. But we did hear one time, they gave Raghunath Das Goswami, they gave him some buttermilk, and he asked, where was it from? And the name of the village was the place where Chandra Valley comes from. And so when he heard it was from Chandra Valley's village, he would not take it. No. Hare Krishna. Uh, we see that uh, uh, you were mentioning the, in your talk that Sukadeva Goswami never mentioned uh, Srimati Radharani's name in, in his in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, is it uh, recommended to uh, openly chant uh, Srimati Radharani's name uh, in Kirtans or uh, especially Radhashtami, we see devotees, they chant Radharani's name. Well, Srila Prabhupada was very cautious about that. Just like, you know, you go in Vraja, we know in Vraja everywhere they say, Radhe Radhe, the people in Vrindavan, they're all eager to get the blessings of Radha Rani. That's very nice. But at the same time, when people would say Radhe Radhe to Prabhupada, he would say Hare Krishna. So yes, Prabhupada is very reserved about mentioning the, top, the glories of Srimati Radha Rani. Just like in the Krishna book, in the introduction to the Krishna book, Prabhupada says, people often ask, who is this man? And who is the woman with this man? Who are they? Who are they? So Prabhupada talks about Krishna, but he doesn't talk about Radharani. So it's certainly very confidential. And we want to be very cautious about that. To, to uh, use up, bring up the names of Srimati Radharani. However, we do sing the Radhika Stava, Sri Radhika Stava. Rupa Goswami wrote that and we do sing it. And on the Radhastami, we do chant the glories of Srimati Radharani. Bhakti Charu Swami had a wonderful recording of Radhastikam. Very beautiful song. So he sang that. So certainly with caution, we don't want to become over familiar in taking the name of Srimati Radharani. So with caution, we chant. But we do say that uh, by the mercy of Srimati Radharani, if she will accept us, if she will recommend us to Lord Krishna, then certainly Krishna will accept us. So that's very special. If you get Radharani, if you can somehow please Srimati Radharani, and if she will recommend you to Krishna, then certainly Krishna will accept you. So we, we do want to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani. Of course, we chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna is not different from Radha Krishna.
Okay, Hare Krishna, we will stop here. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gorbhakta Vrinda ki.